Welcome to Top 10 Archive. We all love a good fable about the supernatural, but what if there were something sinister to it? What if the tale is about something tangible, something that is not a figment of an imagination or easily written off by swamp gas? What if the tale is about something deadly, a cursed artifact that should be avoided at all cost? Well, you'd probably want to hear more about it. So, we're going to deliver you tales of the top 10 most cursed items. Number 10. The Anguished Man Painting Another instance of paranormal art, the anguished man indeed looks like a painting that would be tied to some deadly curse. An unknown artist depicts what looks to be a man in some extreme discomfort in this aptly titled painting. But the true story starts with Sean Robinson, who inherited the painting from his deceased grandmother, who hid the painting away in the attic for 25 years, fearing it to be evil. Once brought into his home, Robinson began to experience dark shadows, disembodied noises, and other acts of paranormal that drove his wife to refuse to be in the same home as the painting. Many paranormal groups in the UK sought out the painting, one group, Mysteria Paranormal, even using it on many of their investigations. Number 9. Myrtle Plantation Mirror In St. Francisville, Louisiana, sits a stretch of land famous for its sordid history and run-ins with the paranormal. The Myrtle Plantation has been featured on countless television programs proclaiming the location's inherent evil. And there is one portion of the house that many tend to focus on, and that is a mirror said to manifest the figures of those murdered on the plantation. There is heavy speculation on the final death tally at the Myrtle Estate, but locals and tour guides alike are adamant that upwards of ten murders have taken place on the plantation. Those that take photographs of the mirror are typically surprised by phantom fingerprints that, even after a thorough cleaning and replacement of the glass, still remained. Is it the tortured souls of the deceased, or a mere trick of the eyes? Number 8. King Tut's Tomb Egyptian curses are quite fascinating, used often post-mortem to protect one's effects and sanctity long after they have died. King Tut's Tomb is one of the most popular aspects of ancient Egyptian history, the young king's riches and secrets being two much-talked-about topics. On November 4, 1922, archaeologist Howard Carter finally came across King Tut's tomb, a magnificent find for his field, but a deadly one for those involved in the expedition. Within seven years of the discovery, 11 people connected to Carter's party died of unnatural causes, the number climbing to 21 by 1935. Skeptics attribute the unexplained deaths to a fungus, though the inscription on Tut's tomb is hard to ignore. Death shall come on swift wings to him who disturbs the peace of the king. Number 7. Atuk Script There are plenty of expected curses in Hollywood, but none is more infamous than the curse of Atuk. Atuk is a rather harmless thing in concept, a movie adaptation of the novel The Incomparable Atuk. But if you look into the history of the script, you will start to unravel something sinister. Starting in 1982 with John Belushi, five actors who have read the script have died of unnatural causes. Following Belushi, Sam Kennison, John Candy, Chris Farley, and Phil Hartman had all read the script, dying only months after their initial read. Of the five deaths, John Candy is the only one to have died of natural causes. Kennison was killed in a head-on collision, Farley and Belushi overdosed on drugs, and Phil Hartman was murdered by his wife. Number 6. Robert the Doll In Key West, Florida, there resides a doll that terrorized children to the point of paralysis. The story of Robert the Doll starts in the late 19th century when a voodoo woman gives her son, Robert Eugene Otto, a three-foot-tall straw doll. Named after his owner, there was always something off about the doll, and even when Eugene was an adult with a family, the doll had a presence in his life. After a heated argument with his wife over Robert's need for a space of his own, Eugene locked the doll in the attic, inciting a rage from the straw toy that would last for ages. Robert's second owner, a nameless young girl who found him in the attic after her parents bought the old auto home, 
claims to this day that the doll was evil and wanted her dead. Today, Robert lives in the Key West Martello Museum, where employees still claim that the doll is up to his old menacing tricks. Number 5. The Hope Diamond Le Bijou de Wah, or the King's Jewel, has a history that few can put their fingers on. One of the more sordid tales involves a man and a statue of the Hindu goddess Sita. The man was believed to have plucked what would be later known as the Hope Diamond, named after past owner Henry Thomas Hope, from the statue's forehead, only to sell the artifact to King Louis XIV and be torn apart by dogs on a trip to Russia. The diamond was passed down through many owners over time, those coming in contact with the diamonds suffering anything from failed marriages to dead children. Is this artifact of immense wealth cursed, or is it all just media speculation created to sell newspapers? The world may never know, as the curse seemed to break when the last owner, Harry Winston, donated it to the Smithsonian Institute. Number 4. The Busby Rocking Chair If you were extremely tired, would you seek relaxation in a chair that has earned the nickname The Chair of Death? In the village of Thirsk, a local museum houses such a chair, owned previously by a coiner turned murderer, Thomas Busby. In the early 18th century, Thomas Busby was hanged for the murder of a fellow coiner. Just before his execution, Busby requested one last drink in his favorite chair, a sturdy rocking chair. It was in this chair that the murderer muttered his final words, Death will come swiftly to whoever sits in my chair. As it stands today, the Busby chair is sustained from the ceiling to put an end to the tolling death count that arose over the years. From motorcycle accidents to the tail of a chimney sweep falling from a roof shortly after defying the chair's curse, there are said to be dozens of victims of Busby's final words. Number 3. The Hands Resist Him You can find a lot of things on eBay. Heck, at one point someone even tried selling their kidneys. But you may not expect to find cursed articles like Bill Stoneham's painting inspired by a childhood photograph. The Hands Resist Him was featured in an art show put on by Charles Feingarten where actor John Marley purchased it. Between 1978 and 1984, Feingarten and Marley passed away, joined by Henry Seldes, a Los Angeles Times writer that gave the painting its first press mention. The painting disappeared for 26 years, resurfacing randomly on eBay by a family that was desperate to rid themselves of the painting. According to the listing, the children in the painting would come to life. Even those that viewed the listing were met with uneasy feelings and becoming violently ill. Number 2. The Dibbuk Box In Jewish lore, a Dibbuk is said to be a restless, malevolent spirit thought to be able to possess the living. The box described herein is not some ancient secret to containing the Dibbuk, but rather an artifact with history dating back to the Holocaust. The portable wine cabinet, as it was described in an eBay auction held by prior owner Kevin Manis, the box was apparently purchased by Manis from a Polish Holocaust survivor who claimed the box had unknown origins in Spain. Those that open the box are said to be met with great misfortune and poor health as the spirit inside weakens them for possession. Number 1. Annabelle Ed and Lorraine Warren were amongst the world's most prolific in the field of paranormal research and investigation. They were present for the highly publicized Amityville Horror House investigation and were the owners of many artifacts said to be cursed by the paranormal. Within their collection was a rather normal-looking Raggedy Ann doll, locked up behind a glass cabinet with the warning, Positively do not open! Annabelle was originally owned by a woman named Donna, who received her on her 28th birthday from her mother. Over the time she owned the doll, Donna stated that the doll would shift positions, leave troubling notes for her, and would be found with drops of blood on her. A friend of Donna's, Lou, claimed to have been scratched by the entity within the doll. After the Warrens removed Annabelle from Donna's possession, they kept her in their personal occult museum. 
One visitor to the museum, a young motorcyclist, mocked the doll, tapping on the glass and daring her to do her worst. Three hours later, back on the road, he lost control of his motorcycle, hit a tree, and died. Like these top 10 videos? Subscribe by clicking the annotation here and give our video a like. And share the link for this video with all your friends on your favorite social media sites. Have an idea for a future top 10? Leave a comment in the section below.